Hey there, my name is Evan Mazunik, and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Sound Painting Saturdays. I'm looking forward to continuing this series all the way to the end of the year. We're almost there, and I appreciate those of you who have stuck with this so far and have engaged in this conversation. I've really enjoyed the process and look forward to the rest of the videos we have for this year. So I have a little bit of an exciting tidbit for those of you who happen to be in the New York area on an event coming up this week. But before we get there, first I want to do two things. I want to, one, uh, respond and include you in on a conversation I've been having over email. And two, I want to give an update from this week's Geek Tank with Walter. And then I want to give you a call to action and invite you to participate in this work. So first, I just wanted to follow up and keep you all in the loop on a great email conversation I've had with Jean Baptiste. Uh, we had a great uh, conversation. He sent me an amazing email uh, in response to this series and had several thoughts. And I just wanted to address one of those thoughts, which was a great uh, valid concern he had about thinking about speed and about signing. And the speed of signing and the speed of signing with an, an ensemble, if I can get that word out. So considering your ensemble in the speed of your signing and really... Uh, he had a great point in our email about thinking about the performers and not letting your imagination, as I understood it, not letting your imagination get so far ahead of the uh, performers that you can't bring them along and you can't uh, make sure to include them in your live composition. So I think that's a great point, Jean-Baptiste. Thank you for bringing up, uh, and it's a great reminder to me to bring along my ensemble and the people I'm working with and make sure to include their hearts and their minds and their imagination and sign quickly but not so quickly that you lose the group and I just wanted to make a bit of a clarification about what I'm really thinking about when I talk about signing and signing with speed this is very uh, encouraging and helpful for me to really think this out and wrestle this out and clarify what I'm going after but for me, when I'm talking about signing with speed, I'm not looking so much for velocity of speed as I am looking for efficiency. Or I'm looking to shave off little microseconds in my signing, not to necessarily drive the composition faster and go for more velocity and sign really, really quickly, like I've uh, taken a lot of uh, caffeine or I've had a couple espressos, but to really minimize the time that I'm asking an ensemble to, in a sense, sight read my gestures and to get right at the heart of the matter from imagination to execution. And that might mean a very efficient gesture and then nothing for 30 seconds. So the tempo of my signing may be somewhat slow, but when I'm talking about speed, I'm really interested in going for a very efficient and quick way of signing and a clear way of signing very concisely in the moment when I do sign, so that it's all about efficiency of signing and not necessarily about the velocity of signing. So I just want to include you in on that conversation and Jean-Baptiste, I owe you an email, so look, look for that email from me very soon. But uh, I also wanted to transition to the next part, which was a little bit of an update from this week's Geek Tank. I had a great time meeting with uh, the man Walter Thompson this week here in New York. and. We came up with a couple interesting things, and I wanted to share one of those things with you, which is all about f phrasing, or in a sense, combining ideas that, in some sense, already exist in the language, and that will lead us into your call to action as to how you can participate in this. So this idea that came up in the Geek Tank was a combination or modification of this idea that I presented in the C uh, your Stink Tank via video of working with, as they call it, stick mode. I had presented a play mode. Let me try that again. <laughs> play mode. There we go. Maybe I need some coffee. A play mode and a think tank very wisely I think suggested that it be stick mode. So if you haven't seen that video go back uh, that video is from the middle of this year and I go into more detail about that gesture but I don't want to get into detail on that on this video. But the idea was maybe take stick mode and include it with the field. So you might have a field stick mode, or maybe just field stick. 
and that could work really great when you're working with different parts of the ensemble. You might do a long tone here and a pointillism there. So you can stick that content and it stays, but you can also work in different parts of the room. So you might have two sides of the room, again, working maybe with long tones over here in the begin, or pointillism over here in the begin. You might want to go in and open that up. Again, in real time, invite them to develop that. So I just wanted to include that as one little tidbit of the way we're thinking about and really fascinated about how to stitch together ideas that are already present in the language. There's such a rich vocabulary we have at our disposal that uh, that leads me to the call to action and the invitation for you to go ahead and send me your ideas for your favorite new phrase. Not necessarily a new gesture, a new idea for a new gesture, but a new phrase. So really looking at the language, looking at what already exists, even with sort of quote unquote basic language, and trying to combine it in new and fresh ways because there's so many ideas I know that are waiting for us as composers within the sound painting language. A uh, case in point, Etienne, uh, hey Etienne, sent me a great email and sent also the, a lot of other sound painters from this last year's think tank with a combination of all the different permutations of gestures, almost all of them from workbook one, uh, the sound painting workbook one. And it was mind blowing and staggering to see how many different phrases could be made from just really the basic 43 gestures. And it was really, 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 really cool. And if you want access to that, don't have that, contact me, I'll put you in touch with Etienne. I'm sure he'd be more than happy, if I could say so, to uh, share that with you. So the call to action is to really go ahead and let's start a conversation about how to phrase new ideas from pre-existing gestures, putting old gestures together to make new phrases. And that leads me to the last, uh, but definitely not the least little tidbit. Like I said, for those of you in the New York area here this Wednesday, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm going to be in the front row. I'm really excited to check out Walter Thompson and Butch Morris in conversation in public, really for the first time in this way. It's going to be up at Columbia this Wednesday night. Uh, I'll include a link below in this video description for those of you who happen to be in the New York area and want to check it out with me. It's free and open to the public. I'd highly recommend to get there if you're interested in this beautiful emerging field of live composition. So thank you again. Thanks for uh, tuning in and I hope you have a good week.